Hello, hello, Kevin Pelowi here, and welcome to Build Series Live in New York City. The Little Stranger, based on the beloved book by Sarah Waters, is a new film that has been described as one that defies conventional labels. Uh, in just a minute, we're going to have director Lenny Abrahamson, stars Donald Gleason and Ruth Wilson here, where we'll try, to, we'll try our best to get them to apply some conventional labels. I, I'm kidding. Here's a look at The Little Stranger in theaters August 31st. The first time I saw Hundreds Hall was July 1919. Nothing could have prepared me for the spell it cast. When I saw the house again 30 years later, I could hardly comprehend the change in the place. Why don't you tell me what's going on? You wouldn't believe me. Mother. This is Dr. Faraday. How did you find the patient? Little under the weather. It's war shock. They brought Caroline home to nurse him. I'd heard they were troubled. Very hush hush about it. A long time ago. Who's this child here? What are you doing here? Susan died before I was born. There's something evil in this house. That's nonsense. Betty, what are you doing here? You rang for me, miss. I did not. Well, Mrs. Ayres was upstairs. Rang itself. Did it? What is all the noise? She's here. That's impossible. Your mind is playing tricks. Susan is a memory. It can all be explained. How innocent you are. I'm worried, Doctor. Last night he said he could smell smoke. And I couldn't smell anything. These delusions seem almost contagious. Someone's playing games. People are capable. Of nasty impulses. There's something in this house that hates us. You do not belong here. Oh, yes. There'll be tricks tonight. Stop! Stop! What happened next? This is a mystery to me. All right, please give it up. Lenny Abrahamson, Donald Gleason, and Ruth Wilson from The Little Stranger. What is going on, guys? Welcome to Build Series NYC. Great to have you here. Uh, congrats on this film. I really enjoyed it. I, it it's one of those films that uh, keeps you guessing from like the opening seconds to the final frame when it comes down to what the hell is going on in this house. Uh, I, I really dug it. I'm excited to talk to you guys about it. Uh, Lenny, Lenny, let's start with you. Um, you're coming off uh, an Oscar nomination for an excellent drama called Room. Uh, I, I imagine many doors are opening for you in the process, pun fully intended. Uh, so what, what, what was it about, about this period tale, this, this tale of gothic horror that, that, that spoke to you? Well, I, I read the novel that it's based on actually quite a number of years ago when it came out. So it was something that was buzzing around in my head from well before I made Room, even before the film before that. Um, and I think what it was was partially to do with what you said. It's, got, it's an extraordinary mixture of things. It's, essentially, it's a drama, and it's about these people in this rather extraordinary house um, in the middle of the 20th century in Britain. But it, it gets into those characters by using all of the lovely stuff that you get in gothic ghost stories. So it's this um, hard to categorize, really interesting um, way of, of studying these characters. So I just couldn't get it out of my head. And, and when Room came out and there was all that sort of fuss, um, it didn't make this any less the thing I wanted to do next. Yeah, it, it, it's twofold. You're trying to figure out 
what the hell is going on in the story, and you're also trying to figure out what the hell type of film this is. Is this a horror movie? Is this a drama? Is this supernatural? Uh, Dono, let's talk about you. You, you play uh, a, a troubled man um, who gets uh, more than he bargained for uh, when he arrives at this rural country home and finds a small but menacing presence. Um, that actually is the plot for Peter Rabbit, I, I just realized. <laughs> did, did, you, did, you just make, did you just make the same movie twice in a row? <laughs> Basically, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't think I'm going to take my five-year-old daughter to this one. She loved Peter Rabbit. I, I, think, I think we'll stay away from this one. No, but in all seriousness, uh, let's talk to, about Dr. Faraday. Um, he is, you know, kind of had a blue-collar childhood, um, made a great career from, for himself, helps all these people as his doctor, but there is a, there's an aching loneliness, I think, to him. There is um, may, maybe a darkness, maybe a dark side mm -hmm. to him. Uh, uh, tell, tell us a little bit more about the doctor. Um, I think you've summed it up really well, you know. I think um, he's come from uh, very little financially. He has always wanted to be a part of the people who he saw as existing above him, um, kind of encapsulated in the film by the heirs family. Uh, and I think he just wants to be of their world. And even though uh, he can make more money and he can do lots of stuff to appear as though maybe he's of that world. He will never truly be of that world. Mm -hmm. um, but he really, he loves the house. He loves the people there. And he just wants to be a part of it. And so when the house basically gets sick with this presence that's in there, when things start happening and going bump in the night, he wants to figure it out. And at the same time, he's getting very, very close to Caroline Ayers, uh, mm -hmm. who was played by Ruth Wilson. Great segue. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome for doing Thank that. You Thank you for <laughs> doing that. Uh, Caroline. You practice that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Let's, let's, punt over. let's punt it over. Let's punt it over. Caroline's a, a great character, such a dynamic character, uh, beautifully played by yourself. And she is, uh, uh, I think, with she's kind of forced back to this manner because of family circumstances. And uh, despite all of the madness sort of surrounding her seems like she might be the most well put together person in this story. Uh, and she's not all that well put together. <laughs> uh, but tell us. That's a bad punch. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Tell us a, a little bit uh, about what, what, how you related to Again, her. Again, a very good description. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think she was someone that during the war tasted freedom. So she was, uh, she'd be part of the war effort. She was a wren. She was out of this environment that she grew up in. Um, and she had, taste of those freedoms economically and socially. And then she's thrust back in post-war um, into that social strata, into a class which is declining and is falling apart mm -hmm. and is not progressive. And, um, and the house is sick and she's seeing her family members sort of lose their minds, or seemingly so. Mm -hmm. um, and I think she might, you know, she sees Faraday as like a companion, but also a possible way out of this world, and he probably sees her as a possible way in to this mm -hmm. world. So it's kind of interesting, that conflict that they have. Um, but yeah, she is very matter of fact. She's very practical, mm -hmm. um, and she's the last to sort of believe in this supernatural element. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably why she also, he appeals to her, because he's science-based. But um, yeah, it's fascinating. I, I really loved it because these characters aren't really seen on screen often, these kind of eccentric mm -hmm. aristocrats. We have a Absolutely. lot of nostalgic, romanticized, you know, in, right. in Downton Abbey or any period drama we see. But these are real sort of Grey Gardens, eccentricity, <laughs> sort of oddballs. Right. And um, they exist in the UK, <laughs> quite a lot of them. So it's really yes, fun. They right? all voted for Brexit, sadly. Yeah. <laughs> so basically what you're saying is this is the reality show version of the uh, Gothic. Yeah, uh, these are the tale. real. And we had so much fun because we all yeah. had like, you know, don't know his tash. I had my teeth. Uh, <laughs> will Porter had his like facial scars. You know, we all had yeah. great fun with the makeup. Yeah, the, what, let's talk about what Will Will Poulter. I think one of the the most uh, exciting young actors of his generation. Tell like, tell us about what this guy does in this film, and, and also what he had to endure in the in the makeup chair. So, so Will plays um, Caroline's younger brother Roddy, and he's uh, he was a pilot fighter pilot during the Second World War, but his plane was hit and it uh, you know it turned into a fireball, and he bailed out, but he suffered terrible burns. So poor Will had to endure five hours of makeup every morning to get him ready, which was all this prosthetics, and um, two hours to get it off in the, in the evening. And it was hot, and we were shooting during the summer. It was a really tough role for him physically, but Will is an amazing 
actor. I'm sure people will know him from any number of great things, like mm -hmm. Detroit, for example. But yeah. um, he's just such a lovely guy as well, and I think does an amazing job in the film. Yeah, and he hated all of you guys on set for what he had to go through. He he doesn't speak to anyone. <laughs> he speaks to I've me. Never seen him uh, since. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think it's just Lenny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ruth, you previously starred in another great horror film, the, the oh. Pretty Little Thing in, in the House. In the yeah. house. Right on title. Yeah. Yes. Uh, is there a trend <laughs> developing here? Is this is this your 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 go to genre? Are you well, just like no, old? it hasn't been um, just recently. But um, no, I found both of them quite poetic. They're not traditional. Are they ghost stories? But they're not sort of. Uh, and they're not traditional horror. They're not sort of jump scary. They're much more poetic, both of mm -hmm. them. Or and cerebral. A, and cerebral and um, psychological, I think. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm a, I appeal to. It's the characters mm -hmm. at the heart of it rather than like the scare factor of something like this. Um, yeah, so that's... I just get, I just go for weird things. Yeah. <laughs> I tend to. Uh, Lenny and, and Donald, you guys previously worked together on uh, a great indie musical i don't think i don't know how to describe this this film it's but it's another it's, one that's it's bonkers about, and it's yeah. brilliant and it's called frank and check it out if you haven't seen it um but but obviously you guys got along you you made another film together are you are you in touch are you looking for another project how did that how did the, this collaboration uh come together once again um lenny uh sent me the script and we were talking about maybe doing me playing a different part in the film at some point and i said actually I mean I just fell in love with it it was when I read the script first of all it was that feeling of like I used to babysit for the next door neighbors and when you when everyone would be gone even though my parents were next door if you heard something move in the house and you got scared and even though you knew it wasn't anything sinister and that everyone was just next door mm -hmm. that feeling of just sitting there with your heart racing not knowing why you feel bad and even though I don't believe in ghosts wondering then why is my brain making me feel like this mm -hmm. like that kind of that feeling of just being uneasy all the time was just in the script. It was just there all the way through. And so the stakes were high all the time. And I thought, God, like, just to be a part of that would be amazing. And I loved Faraday because I couldn't make head or tail of him. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to Lenny about him and he said, let me think about it. And I, I, had, I would have done anything in the film. I would do anything to work with Lenny on anything. I think he is about as good as anybody is who's working at the moment. And um, I was just thrilled when he said, let's let's try and make it together. So, um, yeah, I'm always pestering him to do other stuff together. I mean, it, well, I would say, um, you know, we got on so well on Frank and we became friends afterwards and we will definitely... If afterwards? It, well, yeah. <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> um, when, when he'd forgiven me. Um, but, but, but then, you know, we will definitely do more together and I would love to work with both these actors on anything. Um, but I think with Faraday, because he is such an odd character, right? He's a sort of quintessentially buttoned up, in a way, British guy. You know that 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 idea of the of the repressed, you know, emotionally sort of distant Englishman. But there's something else going on underneath, and something kind of quite intense, and which has to be portrayed very delicately. And and also, if you Donald has, as you can tell in the room, has tremendous warmth as a person. And that is important because actually we do care about Faraday. He isn't, um, he isn't just odd. He isn't just dark. Yeah. He's sort of a bit like all of us, desperately trying to work out how to come to terms with all the mm. messy stuff he's been carrying all his life from childhood. And I think what's, what's fascinating about the film is, uh, yeah, it's certainly true that it's hard to categorize. You can't say it's a straightforward horror or a straightforward drama. But actually what it is is pretty simple in a way. It's, about, it's a drama about these people where the only thing that's other is that the intense feelings that the characters carry with them somehow echo in the world and particularly in this house. So it's a, that's the what if in the film. What if the things that you carry were not just internal but also somehow bled out into the world and, and affected what happens? And that's why it's, that's where the creepiness comes from. It's not like some crazy external ghost. It's about these people and what they carry. Right, right. Yeah, and I, I definitely found myself rooting for Faraday, uh, especially to find some love. You know, I, I want that. There was, there was kind of like a will they or won't they uh, that romance that bubbles up between your characters. You should just shave the mustache. I think everything <laughs> would be so much easier if you just shaved off the mustache. Too tickly. The little stranger may be the mustache. I think that may be the. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. It's like a little how, caterpillar. But, <laughs> <laughs> just gonna, yeah. but how would you two categorize the, the the dynamic, the relationship between those two characters? Like the odd couple. I mean, I, <laughs> they, um, 
I read it when I read the book. I was like, you, there's a moment when you do want them to get together. You're like, come on, they're sort of, they're both odd. They kind of have a warmth towards each other. They enjoy each other's company. Um, but there's just something not right about it. And it, that is in the book as well. It really feels yeah. like there's a sort of, it doesn't, something odd, it doesn't quite. So it's, again, it's like almost out of convenience, I think. Or they think they should, this should work. It should, mm. uh, but it doesn't. And there's right. something that's getting in the way. And that's yeah. obviously both of their, I don't know, both of their feelings, like Lenny says, it's underneath all that. They're also, they're two, you know, they're sexual people. Yeah. Everybody is, and I think that they, neither of them have had sex for a while. And it, the way that the society worked at that time, it was, you know, there was a lot of judgments going around. I think part of what Faraday loves about Caroline is that she appears not to judge him, mm -hmm. he thinks. Yeah. But at the same time, he's judging her quite harshly in a lot of ways, you know, in a very sort of male way. Um, and then as time goes on and he, you know, realizes this isn't just somebody of the upper classes, this is, this is a woman, you know, who talks to me. I think those things just start bleeding into each other, you know, like the, the, it becomes quite fervent for a while. Mm -hmm. And um, I loved all that, you know. Mm -hmm. And I felt very, very lucky to do it with Ruth to play, to act with Ruth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> uh, let's, let's talk about, the, the, so the, the novel, the novel's ambiguity, I think, was something um, that was praised and also debated among, you know, this, this book has some very fervent fans. Um, the amb ambiguity, the ending, which we won't, we won't get into here. Um, but how, you know, what kind of challenges did you find adapting that? Because obviously you've, you have so much, uh, more space to play in a, in a novel, yeah. um, but when you have to tighten this up in, into a film version, what kind of challenges does that present? I mean, it's, it's always really tricky, especially if you love a book and you care about people's, pe you know, you know other people love the book and you don't want to be the one to ruin it for, for that audience. But uh, you're right, you know, a novel can take its time and it can digress and do all that, and films are really kind of demanding about forward motion. So I think it was just, the real challenge was, in the novel, people tell Faraday things. And while they're telling him, he recounts it to you, the reader, and you see it. But he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Now, we're with Faraday all the time. We have to find ways of showing things um, that, you know, that, that, that sort of broad ways of bringing him into situations where he ne wasn't necessarily there in the novel. And, and also, you have to lose a lot of stuff. But I think, and it was lovely, I saw a quote from Sarah Waters, the novelist, in the last few days, and she seems really keen on the adaptation, feels that it's true to her novel. So mm -hmm. hopefully the fans won't, you know, hate us. The other thing that I loved about it, too, is that that thing you're talking about, the ambiguity, feels like it goes all the way through the book. Is this a real thing in the house? Is this these people doing right. it to each other? Is there a ghost there? And I think there is... A deaf, like I, what I loved and why I called Lenny as soon as I finished the script was you fit, it's really w unusual for the answer to come with basically the last word of a novel, you know, mm -hmm. to give you some answer. And I think the film is the same way. I think all the way up until the very last image of the film, you get, you get told something mm, absolutely. Which, which makes you feel like you understand much better everything that's mm -hmm. gone before, which I love. Yeah. Let's talk about ghosts for a second. So we had uh, we had Anna Sophia Rob in here just an hour ago. She's uh, here for a movie called Down a Dark Hall, and we we actually both exchanged our ghost stories. We both had paranormal experiences in Spain around wow. around Barcelona. Um, don't know. I think you just you just you just went on record though. You do you do not believe in ghosts or anything paranormal. Mm, I don't know. And I've had bizarrely in the last like three weeks. I've not, I mean, I, I, loads of people have talked to me about ghosts, so now I'm beginning yeah. to think maybe there are ghosts yeah. who are telling them to say that stuff to me. It's really, I've talked a lot about it. It's been yeah. really, really strange. And people who I think would not believe in ghosts do believe in ghosts. It's all very, very strange. Mm -hmm. But no, I personally don't. I think, I think that sometimes your mind does something to you which makes you, there's an amazing play by Connor McPherson that deals with it slightly. And in that play, the suggestion is that if you need to see something, sometimes you'll see it, you know? I like that. Let's prove Dono wrong. How, what is your what is your <laughs> what is your feeling? I, on know, ghosts? I, I sort of believe in energy, so I believe that sort of energy remains, or things, or um, when you're in a house that's been there for years, you can feel palpable energy of mm -hmm. past things that have been inside that house. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went to this in Santa Fe on the Santa Fe Trail. A group of us went and stayed at this saloon bar that was there years ago, and where lots of people got shot and shot in the back. And you can do like a haunted house tour, and then you can stay the night in rooms where people got killed <laughs> and where ghosts wow. apparently live. So of course, <laughs> like you said, yeah, you're built up, they build up. So you, yeah. of course <laughs> you're all going to bed freaking out. Mm -hmm. I couldn't turn the light off. I slept with my eyes like yeah. this and didn't open my eyes, didn't sleep. Um, 
didn't feel anything. Just felt mm -hmm. weird. Just freaked myself out. Someone else did feel like someone pressing on their chest as if someone mm -hmm. was... Well, I don't know. I, I've never seen a ghost. Yeah. Uh, but I do believe in energy. I yeah. believe there's so much we don't know about. Yeah. And we have no... You know, there's so much we've got no idea. So I wouldn't be surprised if they do exist. Lenny, break this tie. What do you think? Uh, uh, personally, no. I, I, I don't, I'm very kind of, you know, I, I don't believe in, mm -hmm. in ghosts or anything like that. But I do think, you know, in a funny sort of way, uh, to echo what Donald said, you know, if, you're, if you feel anxious at a party, the par you experience that party in a jagged kind of way, or if you feel very relaxed, then everything around you becomes smooth. And, you know, we, we, we really do perceive our world through the filter of whatever kind of emotional state we're in. And, and fear and that kind of un anxiety that floats free is very, you know, people really experience it. And I think that does somehow come back at you. But in terms of like believing that in, I know I'm sort of like, I think it's like when you turn the TV off, you know, maybe there's a, like a little mm -hmm. tiny glow on, on, the, on the screen for a second, but, but it's off, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think anything continues. But, you know, I could be wrong, of course. Okay. Uh, Ruth, there are some heartbroken fans out there of the affair after your recent departure. Um, does this mean that we will see you return to Luther someday? Is that a possibility? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. You're, you're <laughs> saying there's a chance. Uh, there's a chance. Yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> thought, thoughts on thoughts on Idris Elba as James Bond. That's all. Oh yeah, that's if he's all, James Bond, I want to be a villain, a Bond villain. Mm. Yeah. Or a Miss Money Penny. Uh, I want. What I'd like to do is a ski chase. Whatever I do, I don't uh, either of those. Uh, Miss Money Penny's never done a ski chase, has she? A anything's possible. But I think it's the first time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, he'd be a great Bond. Yeah. I mean, brilliant Bond. Yeah, Agreed. they've been talking about it for years, though. So I, you know, it's like, well, just make it happen exactly. or don't. Agreed. Uh, Donald, this is a pleasant surprise to have you in New York. I know you're. Uh, you might be a little bit busy on another movie right now. Um, yep. <laughs> Star Wars Episode Nine. How's it going so far? I had a no comment. Uh, I um, <laughs> it's going great. I was on set yesterday. Yeah. It was an amazing set on which amazing things happened. Yeah. And I can't tell you anything about it. I'm, I'm not. I'm not thinking for spoilers. Mm -hmm. I want. I want to know this. I assume you guys have gotten close as a, as a cast. Mm -hmm. uh, this is your 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 thir third film together now. Um, when you come on as as, as Hux, um, do you guys all hang out as a crew? Do you keep do you keep distance? Does the does the is there a division between the light side and the dark side on set? Oh, I see what you mean. No, not really. I mean, uh, historically, my character spends most of his time with Kylo Ren, Adam Driver's character. Right. Um, so I've spent a lot of time with him, but I've also worked with some of the others on different films. So we've all um, we've all spent time together, and we all had a dinner kind of before we started, and it was really lovely like it was it was a lovely thing mm -hmm. i'm so scared talking about it i, <laughs> I, I can't I, I, I believe in ghosts at the moment <laughs> okay uh, okay yeah. we'll take it we'll talk we'll, we'll talk about ghosts again uh i'll let you as, as i talked to, as i mentioned at the top of the interview um you got a, a well-deserved oscar nomination for your last film room um i know how many times i've talked about this m movie and people have have confused it with the room yeah. how many times has that happened to you it, it's happened a few times and, and i did see some brilliant things on twitter people getting hysterically excited that the room had been somehow nominated for an oscar <laughs> 15 years after it had been made um but i really enjoyed the 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 movie of that movie you know oh the and disaster artist. yeah it's yeah. it was great fun yeah. so yeah that that is it's a it's quite a nice thing to be next to on imdb i think you know yeah yeah <laughs> absolutely are, are you a fan of the room uh, i yes i am it 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 just is sort of magnificent you know mm -hmm. It's so sort of odd and mm -hmm. those, you know, if you try to make scenes as stiff as that, <laughs> it would be really hard to yeah. achieve. I yeah. do think it's kind of special in its, in its way because not every bad thing is, is worth watching. You, you could you never know? duplicate that. You, you couldn't. You can't no. set out to make a movie that bad. Basically. No, you need, it, you, there, <laughs> there has you to be can't. some sort of divine spark yeah. <laughs> to create that, yeah. Are you guys room fans? I know we're going way off topic here. <laughs> I haven't seen it. You haven't seen it? The Room. But I'm a fan of... The Room. The Room. room. Yeah. room yes. <laughs> yes, same as that. Yeah. I, I, I also... I, I like the disaster artist very much. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was great. Cool. Uh, we're going to take some questions from the audience now. Who's first? Hi. Hi. Um, my question is for Domino. Um, I was just wondering, because you've done a lot of different movies in your career, letter and very different genres like Peter Rabbit and About Time and Star Wars and I was just wondering how you prepare to play all these characters that exist in very different worlds. Um, 
yeah, it's funny, you know, I think, I think when I started, I was always really nervous. So I kind of developed one way of working, which was just intense suffering all the way up until we started filming and then even more intense suffering for the entire shoot. Um, and I think as time has gone on, I've realized that that's not like each film, I think kind of tells you itself what it needs. So if you find yourself worrying about it, then it means you need to get some work done and you kind of just sniff out what you feel needs to be done. My favorite way of working is, is the way that Lenny works, which is starting very early, talking about the script a lot for a long time, understanding what it needs from what the world of the film needs from the people in it, and then going away and doing all your own personal work, and then coming back and seeing if you can drop that in there and see what kind of waves that makes in the world. So I, I love, the, the best films are the ones that the world is really, really particular. I think that's very true of The Little Stranger. You know, every frame of the film, you feel like you're in this place where the stakes are very high and you're not exactly sure why. And um, I love just preparing really hard and then dropping into that. But then also Peter Rabbit is fun because, um, because you get to fight James Corden when he's not there. So, you know, <laughs> both, both are good. Thank you. All right, next up, hello. Hey guys, awesome to see you here. So, um, Dom Hall General Hux is always my favorite part of the Star Wars movies, I just had to say that. And um, so Lenny, I, I saw Room last night for the first time, I don't know what took me so long, but um, I, I, I think that there are some similarities between that and this, and that the house and the room are both kind of characters in the movie. And also there's kind of a juggling tone and I, I couldn't really you know, put it in a box. So I was wondering like as a filmmaker, as a director, how do you um, like prepare your actors, uh, such talented actors like these to kind of um, take on those different tones, like there's jokes and, and stuff? Like sure, that. I mean I think that one of the big jobs of a director is just to make sure everybody's making the same film. I mean, you know, because we all come from different places and, and we arrive and people have different ways of working and, and it is about trying to create that fundamental sort of space for people to operate in and, and, and yet not, not shut them down, like let people be creative themselves as well. And I think it's interesting that it is true that um, both, one thing that's kind of interesting contrast between Room and, I, nearly, I keep nearly saying the Room, it's funny, um, between Room and, and The Little Stranger is that like the Room set was, you know, 11 by 11 and Hundreds Hall in The Little Stranger is a huge, big mansion, but actually it feels more claustrophobic, I think, than The Little Room does in, in Room, because again, it's about the experience of the people inside it, and the little kid in Room fills that space with his imagination, and that's how we see it too, whereas the huge, big space in Hundreds Hall is experienced by the people in it as sort of oppressive, and we need to feel that as well. And yeah, it, I mean, I think the great thing to do is to work with really good actors. That's the best way to get great performances is cast really, really good actors. And, and I've been extremely lucky in the last films that I've made to be able to do that. Um, and they can often teach you more than, than, than you teach them in the course of making a film. Thanks. To, to follow up on that for a second, um, Hundreds Hall, uh, a gr great set piece. Um, uh, looks like it was all practical. Was it, tell us a little bit more about this location. Is this is this fun is this a functional home? Is it a, a business? What? It's been made into a hotel now, right? So it was. Yeah, it was yeah. built in seventeen something. Then you all know, um, and it's sort of in disuse. It's kind of not been used for a while, mm -hmm. so it's falling apart. Anyway, on the outside, it looks like what Hundred Hall should look like, really. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't. It has. It's had history in it. It's had people living in it, um, and now, yeah, it's been made into a hotel. Whoa. So there you go. You can go and stay in Hundred yeah. Hall. Have they done it up, or is it just as it is? No, <laughs> they'll do it. I think it's cheap still, hell. still to happen. Cheap. I'm not sure when it's going to happen. They'll have a spa. They'll have yeah. like a gym. Oh, yeah, well, you'll be able to <laughs> stay in Roddy. You know, there'll be the yeah. Roddy's yeah. suite yeah. in it. You know, yeah. Caroline Spa. Yeah. You can have it all. I'm going to go stay there, and I might just Jip. I, I Jip. might just have a ghost experience. You never know. Uh, we got one, we got one more question. The dead dog. Hi. Um, so, as actors and as a director. We both, we all kind of have our influences from like prior directors or actors. I'm wondering if there are any artistic influences that are not in your own medium that you kind of draw on for your own work. There was a Philip Larkin poem that I really liked for this that it was quite a difficult accent in the film to be able to do. And there was a Philip Larkin poem that I used to do every morning before we went on set that I really liked. So that was, that was, that was good. Sometimes, um, I listen to music always and sort of get a, somehow a playlist comes about for every project and it can be very odd, but something about a set of 
pieces of music somehow comes to define. And that won't be anything to do with the music in the film in the end. It's just pieces that somehow put me into the right mood. And, and I, yeah, I use music quite a lot, I suppose. Same, I often use music. And you, you sort of find a soundtrack mm. for, it's, it helps me emotionally to sort of get into a zone and to into a focus place. Um, but I've used past it, like past performances as well. Like for Alice Morgan, and Hannibal Lecter, I was like, right, I want to sort of slightly copy him. <laughs> 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 or, or, or find, like, I watched every psychopath movie <laughs> and went, right, oh, Henry, serial killer, <laughs> take a bit from that. <laughs> take from other people mm. as well I think um, but yeah music and dance often helps mm. me weirdly or movement so mm. Mm. what songs were on this playlist I was listening to all sorts of weird stuff there's a um, great composer who sadly is uh, passed away recently Johan Johansson I was listening to some of his stuff mm -hmm. um, and then odd sometimes old bits of um, opera from recorded in the 30s and 40s, just things that people would have listened to then that somehow had that, that quality to them. Cool. We used to listen to that song all the time that we had to dance to. Oh, <laughs> what was that? We had to practice. We're, we're not very good dancers. I say I like dance. I'm not yeah. necessarily good at it. <laughs> and we had to do a dance, and it was like our rehearsals were... I mean, the amount of times I'd trodden your, fit, mm. your feet... And you both you, at the same time, which is impre feet. impressive. <laughs> it's hard to step on both someone's feet at the same time, but Rich managed it. <laughs> you ma you uh, managed it. And then I and then I repaid the favor multiple <laughs> times. So yeah. And then we saw the seed, and it's all up here anyway. So you can't. <laughs> you, we're just for, like, for oh, reasons oh. that I think we all understand at this point. <laughs> yes, deleted scenes on the Blu-ray. Acting uh, through that was yeah. pretty. That's, that's an award in itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, like Ruth's face freeze in the middle of a step, like, I, oh, Dr. Faraday, I'm so <laughs> happy you're here tonight. And then I was aware that I was like, she's doing that. And then I was like, I'm supposed to have talked ages ago. Oh, no. I'm sure we were counting in our head as well. Like, one, two, one, two. <laughs> and it was a waltz, so we shouldn't have been counting one, two. Yeah, right. There is a third beat in there, and now I'm aware. Lenny, Donal, Ruth, uh, great to have you guys here. Thank you, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, pleasure. Thank you. thank you guys for being here. Little Stranger in theaters August 31st.